Do. So I am Bob Hamilton. I'm a pediatrician in Santa Monica, California. I've been in practice there for 36 years. Kids are actually doing very, very well with this infection. It turns out that the number, uh, I was here a, sh a few weeks ago, we were talking about a percentage of total children being, uh, of all cases of COVID, kids represented about 1.7%. That was about a month or two ago. That number has now increased to about 8% of all COVID cases, about 8% of them are occurring in the zero to 18 age category. Okay, so there's a bump there. Now that actually, actually it's a big bump. It's about a 46% bump uh, that really began in the first weeks of July. The reality is that uh, we are testing more and probably we're finding more uh, children who have COVID because it was always there but they were asymptomatic. And in fact, in my own practice in Santa Monica, we've had about uh, eight to 10 cases that we have found uh, positive. Why do we check these kids? Well, majority of them, by the way, were asymptomatic. We checked them because either their mother or their father was positive. And when we checked them, lo and behold, they were positive too. You would never know it. They were feeling perfectly fine. They were doing very, very well. Children are doing very well. People should know that the mortality rate uh, for children, I think in the country, we're up to about 36 children under uh, the age of 14 who have died. Um, that, uh, is, that, that mortality rate represents about one-fifth of one percent, okay, which is a very, very low mortality. Number two I'd like to make, and that is that children are really not transferring this virus from themselves to adults, okay? The, if you look at, uh, right now, the Europeans have gone back to school, about 22 countries in Europe are, have been, uh, have re, uh, brought their, uh, their re, uh, what, re-enrolled their, their students in schools. And uh, the truth be told that there has not been a big bump in, in coronavirus after that re-enrollment. Uh, they began this in uh, the Denmark. Uh, Denmark schools went back mid-April. The other schools of, in Europe have gone back May, and they're doing quite fine. Uh, they did do some. They did do some changes. They did some distancing. They cut down the size of the school classrooms, and they were also uh, careful about the staff. Uh, staff, of course, are usually older. And uh, they have made those adjustments, but they're doing very, very well. In Academy of Pediatrics kind of journal that we put out monthly, the title of the article is COVID-19 Transmission in Children. The children, the child is not to blame. And this uh, study looks at information from a se several countries, uh, China, uh, Switzerland, um, Australia all around, it really doesn't show that there's any indication that children are the, in fact, the drivers of this infection. The, why aren't we going to go back? We're not going to go, go back because they're concerned about the adults in the room, okay? They, everyone agrees that kids are, are tolerating this infection unbelievably well, but when you really, uh, you know, the reason we, we're not going to go back is because people are concerned about parents. ...of why kids are not going back to school. I just want to make sure our viewers really got the message. So from a medical perspective, from a health perspective, are we okay sending our kids back to school? <laughs> if we're, the schools are, are there for uh, them. Okay, listen. All I can say is that uh, Mark Woolhouse, uh, he's a guy from Edinburgh, Scotland. He said the following. It's worth ending the, my little talk on this note. He said, basically, there has been not one documentation of a child spreading coronavirus to a teacher documented and verified in the entire world. Okay, so if, and by the way, he's a professor of infectious disease and epidemiology in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. You know, listen, I would, uh, even if he's half wrong, maybe there's one. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good, that's a, that's a statement that uh, he's not making lightly. So I think we can kind of take that uh, back to our, our communities and say, listen, we really do need to, in fact, get our kids back in school. Thank you.